Hi students, my name is Sanana and I am here to teach you the chapter 2 in Geography, Indian Physiography. So, in the first chapter of Geography, we learned the location and extent of India. We learned which hemisphere the Indian subcontinent lies in. We also spoke about the frontiers, the administrative divisions of India and so on. Now, when I tell you Indian physiography, it mainly refers to the main physical features of India. In this chapter, we would be discussing topics from the Himalayas to the rivers, deserts, islands and all the other physical features of India. So students, by the rule, we always, before beginning a chapter, first know what we are going to study in the chapter. We are going to study general features of the various landforms in India. We will learn about physiographic divisions of India and important features of these physical divisions. Like for example, if I say the Himalayan ranges, it is a physiographic division. We will also be learning all the important features of the Himalayas, that is of that physiographic division. So let's begin learning the chapter. India is a vast, a very big country and it has a variety of landforms. It is such a unique subcontinent where you will see snowfall also and you will see hot deserts also. You will see islands, mangroves, coral reefs rivers, rich agricultural lands, everything. We have a rich variety of everything. So what do these include? Mountains, plateaus, plains, valleys, coastal plains and so on. These have an influence on the river system. Climate, natural vegetation, land use, agriculture, transport and the distribution of population. How you may ask? For example, let us look at the plains, the Gangetic Plain. It's a plain flat land. It is the most populated region of India. It is rich in agriculture. It is easy to have housing facilities there because it's a plain flat land. And agriculture is the main occupation of the people. So, the relief, it determines what will be the land use, what would be the distribution of population and so many other things. So, on the basis of physiography, there are how many divisions? There are four. Almost every year, the, this question has come in the exam. What are they? The northern mountains. In the northern mountains, we will primarily be talking about the Himalayas, the northern great plains. So, the rivers that originate in the Himalayas, when they come down, they bring which soil? Alluvial soil. And when they bring this alluvial soil, it is very fertile for agriculture. So, rivers and the plains that they make, we will be learning about the Gangetic River Plain, the Brahmaputra and the Indus. So, together they are called Northern Great Plains. The Peninsular Plateau or the Deccan Plateau, mainly the region of center to south India. And the Coastal Plains, Coastal Plains on either side of the Deccan Plateau. And lastly, the islands, the Lakshadweep and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands of India. The first topic, the Northern Mountains. What makes up the northern mountains? They comprise of the Himalayas, which are a group of young fold mountains. So students, let me explain to you the meaning of young fold mountains. Normally, mountains in the world are millions and millions and millions of years old. Okay, Compared to their age, Himalayas is just a few million years old. So, it is considered young, young when you compare the other mountains of the world. Fold mountains in the sense, so first there was the Gondwana land 
and there was the Asian plate. So when they collided, when they hit, one went below, one came above and they made a fold. So Himalaya was born as a result of this collision. So it is young in terms of age and it is created because of fold. So it is called young fold mountain. They extend as a continuous chain. So it is a chain that is continuous along the northern boundary of India. It is also a natural frontier between which two countries we studied in the last chapter between India and China. They are the highest mountain ranges in the world. Many of you may have heard that everybody wants to climb the Mount Everest which is the highest mountain peak which is in the Himalayas. They have the highest peaks, deep valleys and gorges, glaciers where a lot of rivers originate, passes etc. In India, they extend from the Indus Gorge in the west to the Brahmaputra Gorge in the east for 2400 kilometers. So the Indus to the Brahmaputra Gorges. The width varies from 240 to 320. Width means like this, length means like this. So the length is 2400 kilometers, the width, the thickness. The width varies from 240 to 320 kilometers. They are broader in the west and narrower in the east. So when they are towards the area of Pakistan, so as they come from Jammu Kashmir and come towards the east of India, they are broader in the Kashmir region and narrower in the eastern region. They cover an area of about 5 lakh square kilometers. They have steep, not gentle, steep slopes towards India and they are gentle towards Tibet. The Himalayas consist of three parallel ranges. This is the greater Himalaya, in the center is the lesser Himalaya and lastly we have the Shivaliks. We will be learning about each one of them. The greater Himalayas, they are the innermost or they are towards the north. They are the innermost and continuous and their height is also the highest. They have the highest ranges. The average height of the ranges here is 6100 meters. They have mainly high peaks of which Mount Everest that is 8,848 meters is the highest in the world. The other peaks, so an important question from exam point of view, name the important mountain peaks in the greater Himalayas. So you should know the names of at least three of them. Mount Everest is very easy, you would have heard it so many times. So you don't have to work hard to by heart it. Now let's look at the other names. Kanchanjanga, Makalu, Daulagiri, Manaslu, Nanda Devi, etc. You can only know the height of Mount Everest. These others are not important. As the greater Himalayas are mostly or always covered with snow, they are called Himadri. An important give reason, almost asked every year. Why are the greater Himalayas called Himadri? Because throughout the year they are covered with snow. They are the home of many glaciers. Glaciers is the ice where, from where rivers originate because of the melting of the ice. Such as Gangotri from where river Ganga originates and Yamunotri from where river Yamuna originates. There are many passes again from examination point of view name the two glaciers and they, will, they may also ask you name two passes in the greater Himalayas. Burzil, Lozila, Shipkila, three passes in the Himalayas. The mountains lying to the northwest of the Himadri, that is to the northwest of Himadri are called Trans 
Himalayas. They comprise of Karakoram range where the highest peak is K2 or another name of K2 is Mount Godwin Austin. It is the highest peak in India. While Mount Everest is the highest peak of Himalayas, it is in Nepal. The highest peak of Himalayas that is in India is in the Trans Himalayas. Its name is K2 or Mount Godwin Austin. So students, also did you know Mount Everest, its Nepalese name is Sagar Mata, meaning the goddess of the sky. The Tibetans also call it Chomulugma. So students in the greater Himalayas, you all mainly learned that they have a height of 6100 meters at a minimum. And we learnt about some important peaks. We also learnt why they have the name Himadri. We learnt about the highest peak in the world and also the highest peak of 